We did addition and subtraction together. Um, then we did multiplication. Now the reason why I'm treating division as separately is because we actually need a new idea for division. So, before we talk about division, a little subpoint which is conjugates. Okay, now, um, we've dealt with this idea of um, this word conjugates before. What context did we deal with conjugates in? We dealt with it in discriminants. Where else do we, like the discriminant is, is the part of the conjugate. What, where else do we meet these things? Like early, mm, late year nine, late year nine? Oh, it's, early nine. it's to do with certs, right? It's to do with certs. So for instance, you don't need to write this down, but I've got a number like this, two minus root three, and its conjugate is 2 plus root 3, okay? Now, the reason why this is useful, we use this for um, rationalizing denominators, right? When you've got a denominator and it's got some weird irrational numbers in it, you can take advantage of the conjugate to make the whole thing rational, right? I just want you to think about that, keep that in the back of your mind. What do you think a conjugate means, not in a third context, but in a complex context, right? Well... Yeah, if we've got z equals x plus i y, right? We write, the, we write the conjugate as z with a bar over the top. In fact, we call it z bar. Okay, z bar, it's just a bit quicker than saying conjugate, okay? Complex conjugate. Z bar is you change the plus into a minus. x minus i y. Okay? Now, why is it important to know what the complex conjugate is? Why is it useful? Okay? What I want to point out here is that if you've got... Um, these are rational numbers, so I'm just going to call this guy Q1, and actually I'll just call him Q, and this guy I'll call Q bar. Okay? Now, the relationship between Q and Q bar is very, very helpful, right? There are two things I notice. If I add Q and Q bar together, if I add a number to its rational conjugate, what do I get? Like in this context, what do I get? I just get 4, right? Not only if I add them, but if I multiply them, which is what you're more used to doing, what do you get? What are we going to think about this? One. You're going to get four take away three because of difference of squares, which is, is just one. So what you want you to notice is when you add or multiply the sum or product, right, of a number and its conjugate when you've got irrational stuff, the sum and product are both rational. Do you notice that? The irrational parts just disappear. So therefore, what do you expect to happen with complex conjugates, well, if you go z plus z bar, right, you're going to get x plus x, which is 2x. What happens to the imaginary parts? They just disappear. They just disappear. Do you see that? Can we use the notation that we learned from before and say 2rez? Um, yeah, you can. So if you add those two together, the complex number and its complex conjugate, then what you'll get is double whatever the real component was, right? But, and more useful for us as we think about division, if you multiply them, z times z bar, okay, now watch what happens. Let's actually write this out. Let's do it just like we had our product over here, okay? So this is going to be x plus i y times x minus i y, okay? I'm going to just treat it like a pair of binomials, yeah? I've got x squared there. I've got minus, minus what? I, y, I, x, y, x, y, y, x. Yeah, I'm just writing alphabetical. That's my first pairing. I'm going to do my second pairing. I've got I, x, y, minus I squared, y squared. You see that? You see how I'm pairing things? Okay, now what's going on? Firstly, these two guys, they're just going to disappear. They're going to cancel each other out, just like they cancelled each other out up here, right? Secondly, that minus i squared turns into a plus 1. So this, in fact, is x squared plus y squared. Okay. Oh. So in just the same way that in the context of irrational numbers, you can use conjugates to get rid of irrational numbers. See, these are just rational. In the context of complex numbers, right? I can use conjugates to get rid of the imaginary part, and all I get left with is real. Yeah. So does that mean that like you have x plus y, x minus y? Mm -hmm. It's only x squared minus y squared. So this time it's x squared plus y 
plus one. Yes, exactly. Because the difference of squares includes the square root of negative one, which becomes a plus. Okay. So all we'll right. Do the whole set of new rules. For yeah, kinda, oh. kinda. They all come out of this one simple implication, right? Okay. So now we're ready to not multiply but divide. So if I say z equals, I'm just going to go straight to my concrete example here. Okay. So I think I had 2 plus 3i on 1 minus 4i. Is that what I said? Yes. Great. Okay. What can I do to this thing? Well, I should be able to write it, just like every other complex number, as a real part and an imaginary part. But it's all mucked up by the fact that the denominator is complex. Right? Now, this is an analog to when you're adding fractions. Right? I'll come back to here. If you're adding together this fraction and this fraction, well, I don't know, 4 minus the square root of 5, you can't add them. They will never talk to each other, right? Because there's nothing you can do to them while they are irrational to get them to fit. Does that make sense? And this I also can't work with while the denominator is not rational, irrational, but complex. So in this case, what I need to do is I've got to rationalize both pairs of denominators. Yeah? I can rationalize them, and then they can talk. Here, I'm not going to rationalize. I want them to be real. So I call this realizing the denominator. No joke. Sounds horrible. That's what it is, right? You want it to be rational, you rationalize. You want it to be real, you realize. Okay? Now, what I'm going to multiply by, just like here, I multiply by the conjugate. I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. Okay? Multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, because the denominator is what's causing the problem. Okay? Now, thankfully, here's what I prepared earlier. I already know what the numerator is. Do you notice that? Like, just because I'm a bit of a cheat, right? So the numerator is already yes. calculated for me. So I'm going to have 14 minus so, 5i. So it is, because there's a, it's plus 4i now, not minus 4i. Oh, you're right. That's okay. How is that going to change things? It's just the imaginary part will be bigger. Should we just should we just nut it out? Do, yeah. do with me? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. I've got two plus eight i plus three i plus twelve i squared. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. On the denominator, I'm going to take advantage of this thing here. Right. See this part here. This is kind of like difference of squares, but backwards. Yeah. It's kind of like sum of squares, if you like. Right. So this is not going to be one take away. 16 is going to be 1 plus 16. I mean, you can write it if you like, but you will see that these parts in the middle, they just collapse. Okay? All right, so now, what can I do here? That's going to be minus 12, so I'm going to write the real part out the front, and then I'm going to get 11i all divided by 17. Okay, now that's fine. You could write that and just go home. However, it is slightly better, being that here, you see the real and imaginary parts are still kind of intertwined, just, just ever so slightly, because they're all in the same fraction. Right? So a better way to write this, to make the real and imaginary parts more clear, their separation, right? I'll write this like so. Minus 10 over 17 plus i 11 over 17. You might think that's a bit of a step backwards, because I've got the two fractions instead of one, right? But really, it's trying to reckon with the fact of what are complex numbers? They are not numbers just like the other ones. I mean, as much as they have them similar, like we're just doing all the same rules, they are another thing. They have these two pieces to them. 